Hello everybody, this is Zoe from No Safer Place and today I thought I would do a little bit more of a personal video. My health in the past year or two has been atrocious. <laughs> it has got so much worse, I've been diagnosed with so many more things and it's been a bit of an emotional roller coaster. So I thought I would just give you guys a bit of an update. I think because I was gone for a lot of last year, I didn't really record any videos, my mental health was really bad. And I know I have been keeping you updated on my health over the past few years actually, but I know I've been really open about my physical and mental health in the past, so I thought I'd just give an update on what's been happening and why I've been so absent I guess. So I'll start right at the beginning. I know I've done a few videos on the conditions that I have but I feel like I have to start at the beginning otherwise some of the later stuff won't make sense. So when I was 17 I was diagnosed with supraventricular tachycardia, otherwise known as SVT. I was a dental nurse at the time, I'm not sure I've ever said this on camera but I, yeah I used to be a dental nurse when I was 17 and I was suctioning blood out of someone's mouth one time and my heart started to feel really fast like I'd been running for half an hour and I was like hmm this is strange so I just carried on sitting there and thought I'm sure it will pass 10 minutes passed and it was still going insane so I thought I'm gonna tell the dentist once this patient's gone so the patient left and I said I think I should maybe ring a doctor like feel my heart this isn't normal so she felt it and she said let's ring a doctor I called the doctors they told me to go in straight away I was there within five minutes they did an ECG on me just to check the functioning of my heart and they rushed me off into an ambulance and that was kind of where it all started. I stayed in hospital for a few days. I was diagnosed with SVT which is basically just a fast heart but for me my heart rate was going 230 beats per minute so it was not normal at all. I was booked in for surgery and then a few weeks later I had my first heart ablation which they said to me had a 1% chance of not working and it didn't work. In the meantime, I was getting other symptoms and something just didn't seem right. It didn't seem like I just had SVT. I was passing out, I was feeling dizzy, getting headaches, being sweaty. It just didn't add up. So my mum spent a long time finding someone that would listen to us. And she found this great doctor in London who was happy to see us on the NHS after my mum practically begged him. And when I was 19, I was diagnosed with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, otherwise known as POTS. And at the same time, I did have SVT, so I had a second surgery where I was in theatre for four hours. Again, 1% chance of it not working. It didn't work again. Basically they go in through your groin to your heart and burn away pieces of your heart until it starts functioning normally, but they just couldn't do it. I opted to be awake for both of them, which they thought was the strangest thing, but I was so scared of being knocked out. So I just remember laying there all that time thinking, oh my God, I need a wee so desperately. <laughs> that is my main memory from having that surgery. But yeah, I had the second one. I was also diagnosed with POTS, which is basically all the symptoms that I said previously. Fainting, sweatiness, dizziness, headaches. It's just not a very nice thing. That basically means that when you stand up, like changing posture, that your heart rate increases. So I had two things that were making my heart rate increase, which is why they think that it was always so high. Because normally people with POTS range between 120 to 160 when they're having a bit of an episode, but mine was always over 200. So yeah, that is just kind of the baseline of things that were diagnosed and happened before I was 20. Obviously I'm nearly 27 now. It wasn't until about two years ago that I started to feel even worse. I had to give up my vocation. I say give up, I was basically sacked because they didn't want me to work there because I was too ill a lot of the time. Which is funny because I told them when I started how bad my health was and was completely honest with them. They knew that taking me on but still proceeded to fire me anyway because I had to take a month off work. Which I had a doctor's note for but yeah, it wasn't the easiest. I think that happened with my job actually was about three and a half years ago. And then for a year, once I'd given up my vocation, my health 
mentally and physically just got so so much worse I got moved to the Hospital of Neurology and Neuroscience in London where I had three days of intense testing to find out what was wrong with me basically. They obviously diagnosed POTS and then they also said that I had joint hypermobility syndrome which was then diagnosed as EDS, otherwise known as Ehlers-Danos syndrome which we found out that my mum also had but not as bad. So I had physio for that which was interrupted by coronavirus actually had a few physio sessions, I saw a lot of doctors who spoke to me about it, I also had some insoles fitted, this was actually this time last year so that's pretty current that I had those insoles fitted and then they said that I might need um, ankle braces because my feet, <laughs> they're not good, they do not like walking. Also while all this was going on I was having real stomach problems like they said that they thought it was because of my EDS because that can sometimes make your stomach not great but I was going to the toilet 10-15 times a day and it got to the point where I thought this isn't normal <laughs> like every time I was going out it was so bad and I just thought I need to see a doctor I went to the doctor, he instantly referred me for a colonoscopy and said the word cancer and I was like oh my god this was in October 2019 and I just, I was so scared, I just didn't know what to do, I was so so ill, I'd lost so much weight, I became anemic, I was deficient in so many things and it just wasn't a great time. He said to me whilst I'm waiting for the colonoscopy to just try and take certain things out of my diet and see if that helps. It turned out that I was gluten intolerant. We don't know if I'm celiac or gluten intolerant so I literally avoid everything because the littlest of things sets it off. But after that I was okay. So this was October 2019 and after a few months it completely settled and I was like yay! Had my insoles fitted in February 2020 and everything just seemed great. The end of February came and I had heartburn, what I thought was heartburn, for a few days and then it got to the point where I was being sick from this heartburn and my wee had changed colour and I just thought, you know what, this doesn't seem right, like I was in intense pain, let me just say, I had to crawl to get paracetamol because I literally couldn't stand, it was that bad, but because of the chronic illnesses that I have, I didn't kind of add up in my head that something could be seriously wrong with me. So after three days I thought okay I'm gonna go to hospital now because this isn't right. I got there, within two hours I was yellow. Every part of me was yellow, I was consistently throwing up and I was really really ill. Um, this was last March, I'm getting quite upset talking about this because I've not really spoke about it properly on camera. I was in hospital for over a week, I then had a district nurse visiting me three times a day for another week, I was on three lots of antibiotics via a drip, I was really really ill. It turns out that my gallbladder was infected as well as me having a foreign virus which I still don't know what that was, but I was so ill. I had a really traumatic experience in hospital as well with one of the nurses. So yeah, it was an awful time. They told me that I needed to have my gallbladder out in four weeks. It was emergency surgery, it needed to be done. So this was March 2020. Obviously we all know what happened around then, coronavirus. I didn't have the surgery, I've been scheduled in for it twice. They say that I'm too high risk to be having surgery at the moment because of all of my conditions. They don't want to put me under something that I don't absolutely need to do. So since March last year, I have been on the strictest diet and on morphine pretty much all the time. It's not great, let me tell you. <laughs> like to the point where I can't have a bit of cake, I can't have a takeaway, I can't eat anything with any bit of like oil in it because it flares up and I'm really really ill. So yeah, let me tell you, it has been a rough year. I'm not sure if you know but I have lost a stone and a half. I am almost underweight now in terms of the government guidance I guess and it's been hard. I was really happy with my weight and the way that I looked and then this happened and 
I mean, I literally can't eat anything. As well as being gluten intolerant and now not being able to eat any kind of fat. It is so awful. And especially with the year that we've had, mentally, whenever I'm having a bad time, all I want to do is eat. That's how I cope with things because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I can't because of my conditions. So usually I will just have a big bowl of crisps or a bit of cake, just as a little treat or a takeaway, which I can't do anymore. So that has impacted my health massively. Then about a month ago, I was really struggling to breathe and I realised that this has been the case for a really long time. So last week I finally had a doctor's appointment and he told me that I had chronic asthma. Yay. <laughs> Which I haven't quite got my head around yet. I did have asthma when I was young. It seemed to kind of sort itself out. So they thought it was like an asthma that I'd just grown out of. But yeah, it's been really bad and it's just got worse and worse. So now I have an appointment on the 15th and I just feel like everything is just wrong with me. I don't know how to say it without sounding really depressive, but I just feel like one thing after another is wrong with me. I have a few months where everything seems to be settling and then something else flares up. In the meantime, I've been having counselling once a week. I found a private counsellor who I pay for every week and she has been amazing. I think without her, I would be very very different mentally she has helped me deal with a lot of things that have happened in the past as well as a lot of things that have happened with my health because this year has been a turbulent one i have been in and out of hospital a lot i've seen a lot of doctors but then also i felt really lonely because every few months i usually go to a clinic in london for my pots just to catch up and see how i'm getting on and I was meant to be going to a few lectures for my hypermobility and yeah everything's just kind of been put on hold a bit like my surgery for my gallbladder to be removed i want that out of me but they said because of my conditions they thought that it would have to be open surgery which they weren't happy for me to go through at the moment whilst the nhs is in the state that it's in so everything just feels like a waiting game and i understand that when you're diagnosed with something you're supposed to feel better. Like when I was diagnosed with asthma last week, I was like, I know in my head, I was supposed to be like, yay, I can breathe now. Now that I've got inhalers, I can breathe again. But my head just thinks another thing wrong with you. So yeah, it's been a rough year, a crazy year. And not even just with coronavirus, like coronavirus aside, it's just been mad. It really has. So that's why I took time off. It's also why part of the reason I wanted to get rid of the Wildest Dreams book box, just so I could focus on myself and making myself better, healthier, mentally and physically. So yeah, I just thought I would update you all. It also makes me feel better talking about it because just having it out in the open and knowing that some people are listening and it might help some people as well. Yeah, it just feels like a weight off my chest. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. I mean, I guess that I am as well as I can be at the moment. But yeah, sending lots of love and positive vibes at the moment. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, subscribe, all that usual good stuff. Also, you can turn the notification bell on to be notified when I upload new videos, which is usually every Tuesday and every Saturday. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you would like to see more of on my channel. And I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye.